Having been in a conscious relationship for about one year at this point, these are my main takeaways. But before I get into all of that, I just really want to elaborate that leading up to entering into this relationship, I found myself in this sort of red pill masculine community online. And for all it is worth, it, it's really great in some ways because it upholds men and women to a certain standard, a, a traditional framework, which granted our degenerate society really needs standards. <laughs> People need more, more than all else at this point in time to step up in the, their own lives, to take responsibility and care for themselves and to also demand that in their partner. And I think that's great, but there were certain things, traits and commonalities in this community that although maybe true, although can be very great, I just didn't have the experiential understanding in myself to, to argue for adopting these viewpoints. So there might be other people out there who have different life circumstances and all this. And on that behalf, they may have concluded that yeah, this entire viewpoint is exactly what I'm looking for. This resonates with my own experience. And I just didn't have that common life experience to, to really say for sure if that is true for me. And so I didn't just abandon or discredit all of this that I have learned about female, male, intersexual dynamics and, and the whole psychology of men and women. I didn't abandon all of that. But I just, I just put it on the back seat, on the back burner, if you will, because it, it's good to have all this knowledge, all this understanding. But first and foremost, if we want to enter into a spiritual aligned, connected, conscious relationship, we can't go about taking other people's word for it. You can't take my word for it either. <laughs> and so... We need to be sure that we are navigating life from the vantage point of our own inner guiding compass. And with that, you need to really assess if your belief systems are your own. And I know that probably most of all of our mind mental configurations are on behalf of what we have adopted from other people. But with that, we must have experiential understanding to back up those belief systems in our own lives. Otherwise, they're not ringing true to you. They're not true to me if I don't have the experience to, to back up or to anchor in those understandings that I've gathered from other people, right? It's like reading a book and not applying the actual knowledge that you've just read about. <laughs> I mean, it's good to have the knowledge, but what good is it if you're not actually applying that knowledge, right? And so I had a lot of knowledge about relationships, but I hadn't seen it manifest or, or applied in my own life. And so when I went about out into the world looking for those specific parameters in a woman, sure, I found all of that. But what I also found is that they didn't align with, with what I had found to be most quintessential, most true in myself. Not they, that they weren't spiritually oriented and not good, kind-hearted women and, and all this good stuff, they were. But when I looked into their eyes, and when I gauged where in life they found themselves, there was just something lacking. And it's hard to pinpoint exactly what that is, right? But you just know. When you're with someone, you just you just have that intuitive knowing, that recognition, that understanding of, of mutual understanding. <laughs> and there needs to be this, this unexplainable, intuitive, just depth and connection that you you know it with all of your being. You just it's not just intellectual <laughs> because my current relationship is far from what I thought I was looking for, having adopted all these viewpoints from other people. But it is exactly 
what I wanted above all else in a relationship. And she is eight and a half years older than me. And, and I have no trouble with that. That is completely opposite to what I thought I was looking for, right? But she is so mature. She has so much life experience. And I, I mean, it's, I couldn't wish for anything better, really. And how, how can I put this? It's, it's just completely radical to what society tells you. It's completely radical to what you'll find online. And, and although that may, may be the case, although that understanding was great for what it's worth, and I don't discredit it, I don't tell you what to do in that regard, but it wasn't what was true for me. And so I want you to take that power back in you to really assess what is yours, what is not yours, what is really true to you, what calls your heart, what, what makes your bells ring, <laughs> what, what really calls your spirit when you gaze into that other person's eyes and, and find someone whom you can deeply gaze into the eyes of because the eyes are the windows to the soul. I know that's so cliche to say, but it is true. And, and for you to be able to look into the eyes of someone else and they to look back at you, you will know instantly if this is someone who shares the same connection spiritually as you. And that is, I would say, the most important when looking for a partner. I mean, they can be different in all manners of regards, but if you share this one commonality, this, this mutual spiritual understanding, this, this connection, this emotional depth, this, this that is beyond words. <laughs> then you're on the path, my friend, to finding the glorious relationship of your lives. So go with that is my words. You have to find out if that is true for you, but I would say that is the most important. And next up, when you find that in someone, don't just get dirty in the sheets right away. No, reserve that for later, please. Because when we, when we indulge with each other off the bat, right, like this, we we activate so many endorphin releases, hormones, our ne neurochemistry is just poof, exploding like a volcano. We feel great together and we can fall in love having oxytocin releases with anyone. <laughs> if we get dirty like this off the bat. So don't do that. Reserve it for later. It's another great takeaway from, from this more traditional approach to relationships is to to save that for later because it masks it clouds your decision making when you're high on neurochemistry on on this biochemistry of your body so you want to really be certain that this is someone that you can see yourself living your entire life with right and in order to do that you need to gauge their their frame. You need to gauge how they carry themselves. You need to assess their value systems. So if you find someone whom you share a deep connection with and all this stuff, but your value systems, they just don't get along. Don't settle for that. <laughs> I mean, you can try talking it out and see if there's, there's basis for mutual agreement, but if you have to compromise, then don't go along anymore. Because where do you think this is going to take you five, ten years down the line? You don't want to get with someone just to see yourselves breaking up later on. What is the point in that? What is the point in going into something half-hearted? You want to get into something with complete devotion, being, being 100%. And sure, you can be 90% and have a great relationship for the time being, but what do you think that 10%, what do you think that 1% of doubt is going to sprout 
roots into your relationship later on, it, it is going to sprout so many problems. And trust me, I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. And, and you can't leave any room for uncertainty, for doubt. And it's very important when you enter into a conscious relationship or any relationship really that you are certain. If you have any uncertainties, anything you need clearing up, do it up front. <laughs> because when you present that to someone, when, when you demand that they stand up to scrutiny, they show, they reveal more of themselves. And when they reveal themselves to you, you can properly assess who they are as a person, who they, who they, how they carry themselves, and just their entire framework in life. And with that, you, you can determine quite rapidly if this is someone you can see yourself spending your life with. Because you see, we have a tendency to, to just follow our own groove in life, right? And, and we may find someone who is on a parallel path to ourselves, but we can't necessarily guarantee that this certain someone is going to stay on the same track. No, they may have slight slightly diverging paths, is that what it's called? They're, they're just 1% wavering away from you, <laughs> value-wise or direction-wise in their life. And, and what this means down the line is that you're going to be worlds apart. So you want to find someone who, who you're willing to settle with in such a way that you renew your relationship on a regular basis. So that may be every equinox or once a year or whatever you have, right? But every now and then, just sit down in ceremony. And I even advocate that you start off your relationship with a ceremony. Make it sacrilegious, make it special. Don't, don't just be like gliding into a relationship where you just softly find yourself, hey, I guess we're together. No, you, you want to have a clear cut line. Like this is where we choose to engage in this mutual agreement of being together in holy union, right? You want, you want that certainty. You don't, don't just want to slide into it and see where it takes me. No, no. You want to you wanna really be clear as to what you're getting into, my friend, please. Because if, if you have these regular assessments of what is my direction and what is your direction, can we still agree on where we're heading moving on? What, what have, has my values changed? Has your values changed? Like, where are we actually headed in life? You need to be in constant communication about this because otherwise you may find yourself just slipping up, like disagreeing on stuff because you're not on the same path anymore. And so if you're looking for a life partner, you need to make sure that you're continually adjusting your, your paths to accommodate each other. And it requires constant accommodation of one another to be in a relationship. I know, I know the individual approach is marketed so much in this world nowadays and, and, and people think it's, it's like my way or the highway. And that, if, if you want to go about that way, good luck. <laughs> because finding someone who is who's going to just completely adopt your frame and abandon all of their own decision making and all this stuff, all, all their own integrity to follow your lead. I don't think it's realistic. Maybe it is for someone out there, but I don't think so, at least not for me and my partner. So make sure that you always have these regular assessments of where are we headed? What are our belief systems and, and just any changes that might occur? Because you really want to be certain that this is someone that you can see yourself with your entire life, right? And so, just take a deep breath with me.
So when you find that someone and you look into their eyes, you grasp this depth, this mutual understanding, you have addressed these various points. I want you to make it special, set up a ceremony. And, and at the end of the ceremony, yeah, you can, you can get in the sheets, do whatever. <laughs> Maybe you want to wait till marriage. It's, it's up to you. But I, I think it's what I came to find is that entering into this, this conscious, spiritually oriented relationship is that the relationship itself, our, our whole approach towards it is that of marriage itself. Because getting into this, we, we had various vows that we brought to the forefront of, of entering into this relationship. So what do, what are you willing to offer? What are you sacrificing of your own body, mind, of your own spirit? What are you sacrificing to be in this relationship with this other someone, this special someone? Because if there's nothing that you are vowing to uphold, to live by any standards that you carry yourself by, as well as expect from the other person, the relationship will just be sort of like soft putty. Like it, it's not, it's not solid. It, it doesn't have the foundation or the basis to, to build something great upon. No, it's just kind of mushy, right? <laughs> you want to actually sacrifice and offer yourself up. So set some vows for the relationship. How do you vow to show up? What values do you vow to, to live by? And what do you expect from your partner also, right? Because you want to treat a relationship, even prior to marriage, by the same standards of marriage. Because I just don't understand why, why would you wait till marriage to take the relationship seriously? If you're entering into a relationship and just sort of seeing where it takes you, just following your heart, right? That is not going to lead you anywhere great. That's, that's like trying a car for a week and seeing if it's something for you. No, <laughs> you want to you wanna be certain this is the car for you and pay up cash in front, pay cash up front, right? Because this is for life. And, and if you're not certain up front, you've not done your due diligence to make sure that this is even someone worth investing your time and life into. And this is what I'm calling you to do, is to, is to make sure that this is, this is the someone that you can dedicate yourself to. And not only intellectually, mentally, that it makes sense, no. Because you will feel you will intuit, you will know beyond words. <laughs> you will know experientially with every fiber or cell of your being that this is someone that you can not only see yourself with, but that you can devote yourself to, right? Mm. So do that homework, <laughs> make sure that you got it all cleared up. Because with that, you can enter into the relationship with, with such devotion that is necessary for a relationship to really come to utmost fruition, to flower and bloom beyond your wildest imaginations and dreams. And I'm not presenting that as some sort of fairy tale, no, because this is deep, Freaking hard work, my friend. This is not going to be easy because I, I think truly, really, that being in a relationship that that is really of this character, it will test and try you in every fashion imaginable. It will take you to the furthest edges of your mind of what you can possibly conceive. You will be 
you will be confronted with your shadow aspects. You will be, you will be brought to tears with all of your tra childhood traumas, and it will be glorious because you will grow through that, you will overcome that, and you will embrace each other even more so in deeper, deeper connection and love. And you can find that the honeymoon doesn't end. This is a lie. The honeymoon, honeymoon only ends if we sell ourselves short. If, if, we, if we have this false idea of what it really takes, because it takes 100% devotion, not 99.9, no, 100%. And it requires that we face ourselves. It requires that we look into the mirror every day and look at ourselves and see, I'm not showing up. I can do better. I wish to do better. I am called to, to set a new standard for myself today, moving onwards, and to cultivate a passionate relationship, a fiery, alive, consciously aligned relationship. And that requires that you show up for you and that your partner can then choose to do the same. And that is the glory of a conscious relationship. I wish that it serves all the purpose in your life to hear these words. If it doesn't resonate, or if it's just utter garbage to your mind, leave it, leave it, leave it. Don't take my word for anything. But if there's something here for you that you can take and bring it to heart, try it, see where it leads you. And with all it's worth, these are my two cents. So I have a spiritual life coaching program which you'll find in the description down below. I want you to check it out, see if we're a good match for working one-on-one. -on -one. I'd love to be your mentor and devote myself unconditionally to you. So check it out. I'm here for you. Bye.